Hi, this is Matt from Notes Productions. Have you ever had to deal with a new version of a picture lock after audio post has already begun? Forcing the mixer or the composer to manually sync everything to the new version? Well, today I'll explain how EDL files can make your life easier in such situation. First, what's an EDL file? Well, it's a file that contains timecode information related to the clips of a video edit, so it can be sent to the post-production team to pass on changes made to the editing. Today I'm going to explain how to export EDL file and how it behaves in Nuendo. Here we are in a short video project in DaVinci. There are three video clips and one other track. As you can see, the video clips are on different track as it would be the case in a regular editing session. In order to generate the EDL file to be sent to the audio post team, you absolutely must have one video track and one to four audio tracks. If you don't want to affect your main editing session, create a copy of your timeline and bring the video clips to a single track, the V1. Once this is done, simply click on File, then Export, and select the Timeline option. Now choose the folder where your EDL file will be saved. Try to use a name that makes it easy to find your way between versions using letters or number, for example. Because the principle is that you will generate an EDL for each change that affects the audio post. Then, in the desired file type, you will click on the first option, EDL file, because the EDL with audio is not going to be useful in this context. Press save and you have just generated your first EDL file that you will now send to audio post along with your editing video and your OMF or AAF. Now let's take the following example. Production asks for a correction or you decide to make changes to your video project for aesthetic reasons. To simulate this kind of change, we will decrease the length of the second clip and then, let's say, we will even move it to the end and bring the third clip back here. We'll adjust the length of the music to make it fit. And that's it. Let's assume that this is the new picture log version. All you have to do is export the EDL file again, as we did with the first one. Remember to clearly identify which version it is to make it easy for everyone. When you go to your export folder, you can see that both EDL files are present. If any other changes are made, just follow the same steps and send the new EDL files along with the video and the OMF or AAF files. For Premiere, we have a similar project to the one in DaVinci, with four video clips and an audio track. Make sure you have everything on one video track. If you don't want to affect your main editing session, Create a duplicate of your timeline and bring the video clips down to a single track, V1. This project has only one audio track, but in case you have several tracks for dialogues or sound effects, you can always create a copy of the project as a safety backup. Next, in the menu bar, click on File, then Export, and select Final Cut Pro XML. Even though the EDL option exists in Premiere, for some reason, there seems to be a discrepancy of about 5 frames in the EDLs generated directly from Premiere. Now choose the folder where your EDL file will be saved. Try to use a name that makes it easy to find your way between versions using letters or number, for example. Because the principle is that you will generate an EDL for each change that affects the audio post, select the file type as XML. For the second version of the edit, we're going to go back into our Premiere Pro session and shorten a clip, then move the whole thing around a bit and why not delete one of the video clips altogether. We'll make sure to adjust the audio. Once the timeline is set up, repeat the export steps and name your file number 2 in order to send it to DaVinci Resolve. Then repeat the previous steps 
by importing the timeline XML into your DaVinci session, then create the EDL corresponding to this version. Now open a blank project in DaVinci Resolve, click on File, then Import Timeline, and select the XML file you created from your Premiere session. Make sure you set the import details, frame rate, etc. You will now see on your timeline an exact reproduction of what was in your Premiere session. Take the time to check that everything was done correctly, and once you've checked, click on File, then Export Timeline, and choose the EDL file type. Name your file appropriately, and now you can send your EDL file with the edit in the OMF assigned to it. Like for every editing software we covered, import all your files into your working directory and create a timeline where there is only one video track. We have made for the purpose of this video a fairly simple project with three video clips and one other track. Once the project is ready to be sent, click on File, then Export XML. As with the other examples, be sure to identify your files to keep track of the working versions. Make sure you have as file type the XML file and save it in the appropriate folder, and then you will only have to import the timeline into DaVinci. The steps are the same afterwards to create the EDL file. Now, here is what the process looks like on our side on the window. You can see a project with a video, a music track, and three ambiences that match the different scenes in the video edit. What we are going to do is import the EDL files in order to compare the editing versions. To do this, in the menu bar, click on Project, then on Reconform. Click on the More icon in the top left box. Then click on the Folder icon and finally select your EDL file that matches the first version of the video edit. Do the same process but with the top right box. Then select the EDL file that matches the second version of the layout. Make sure you have imported the video edit of the second edit in your Nuendo project beforehand. Once you have imported both EDL files, make sure that all the dots are green. If you see any red dots, you can click on the relevant lines and change the timecode displayed. Once you've made your verification, click on the Generate button and you'll see what looks like two timelines stack on top of each other in the bottom window. These are in fact the two versions of the video edit, each block corresponding to a scene or a clip. Click on the gear icon and check that the settings are as shown on the screen. You need to identify which video track displays which version of the edit, and you can select in the bottom window which file will be considered the new video version. Also pay attention to the start timecode. Here we have changed it to 1 o'clock because our DaVinci project started at this time. However, your project could start at the zero mark or even 10 o'clock, so make sure you have the right settings. Now we'll move the window so you can see what happens when the Generate button is pressed. Note that there's a Preview button that allows you to preview the changes that will be made without committing to them. However, for some unknown reason, sometimes this option does not accurately reflect reality. So we're going to press the Generate button directly and that's it. As you can see, our work session has been reorganized and the scenes have been moved and rearranged on our timeline. You will notice that a gap without sound has been created in the middle of the timeline. We can assume that this is a new scene that has been added to the edit and that we have not yet worked on. Consequently, it has no sound design or music, which explains the whole created. Please check that everything is correct. Here you can see that it is indeed a new scene. I hope this was useful. If so, please subscribe to our channel for more tips on sound production and post-production.